Sergey Kovalev recaptures his WBO light heavyweight world title and gains revenge with a 12 round schooling of Alida Alvarez. That's what this was. This was a schooling. And given the circumstances, the fact that Kovalev had lost three of his last five fights, given the fact that he was coming off the most devastating stoppage defeat of his career against his very same opponent, given the fact that he'd shown vulnerability in terms of stamina, and as I say, had also been stopped against the same opponent last time out. When you take all those circumstances into consideration, for me personally, I think this was Sergei Kovalev's best ever performance from a technical point of view, from a mental point of view, and from a fitness point of view. Sergei Kovalev was in tremendous physical condition. There was no gassing out this time around. There was none of the gassing out we saw against Andre Ward in both fights. There was none of the gassing out that we saw against Alvarez in the first fight. His strength and conditioning coach, I forget the guy's name now. He has a Latino name. He needs a massive amount of credit for getting Kovalev in this kind of condition. And perhaps Kovalev's had good strength and conditioning coaches in the past. Maybe he hasn't been listening to them. I don't know. And also from a a strategic tactical point of view, a technical point of view, his new trainer, Buddy McGirt, deserves a tremendous amount of uh, credit for getting Kovalev to box such an excellent technical fight. Kovalev wasn't looking for the knockout. He was in his flow. His rhythm was very good. He was keeping uh, Alvarez occupied with a constant barrage of punches. He wasn't reckless with the shots, Kovalev, but it was just nice, steady boxing, good jabs, controlling the action. He was the ring general all the way through. I thought it was a fantastic performance. I thought he really proved himself from a mental point of view because there were moments when Alvarez did get close and did land a few shots on Kovalev, but Kovalev didn't panic, you know, against Andre Ward and against Alvarez first time around, Kovalev looked panicked whenever he got hit, but when he got hit in this fight, he looked calm, he didn't panic, he was in full control, and I think that's testament to his change in attitude for this fight, but also to the way he was boxing, the emphasis on being calm and relaxed. When he's all wound up and tense and he's looking for the knockout, I think it makes him more vulnerable, mentally and physically, and technically, you know, defensively. But this time around, it was all about smooth boxing. And I touched on this in my preview video for this fight. I said that Buddy McGirt, as a fighter, was a boxer. And Buddy McGirt, as a trainer, he tries to get his fighters to box. I mentioned... uh Arturo Gatti being the best example because Arturo Gatti was just a straight up slugger and Buddy McGirt took Gatti and he turned him into this boxer puncher and he really lengthened Gatti's career towards the end because he got him to box rather than just slug he did a tremendous job with Gatti and here with Sergey Kovalev somebody who in all honesty is much more talented than an Arturo Gatti he took Kovalev back to what Kovalev was probably taught in the amateurs the boxing, staying in your rhythm, you know, nice and steady. Kovalev maybe got too in love with his power earlier on in his career, and maybe he understood that. And, you know, I did say in the preview video that I liked how confident Kovalev looked going into this fight. When he was face-to-face -face with Alvarez, there didn't seem to be any uh, fear there. There didn't seem to be any apprehension. There was no nervousness. And, yeah, I think this was a fantastic performance from Sergei Kovalev. I actually felt that the scorecards, two of the judges had Kovalev, I think, by four rounds. And the other judge had Kovalev by a very wide margin. I think Kovalev by four rounds is too close. Seriously, people, if you gave Alvarez one round in the whole fight, I don't think that's too harsh, to be honest with you. Now, some people are saying Alvarez didn't show up this time around and they're disappointed in Alvarez. To be honest with you, I don't think Alvarez was any worse in this fight than he was in the first fight in terms of what he was doing. Um, the only thing I would say is that Alvarez wasn't landing the jab in this fight as much as he was in the first fight. But I think that's probably testament to Kovalev's improved defense for this fight. Now, Kovalev was too intent on hurting Alvarez first time around. Whereas this time around, he was just boxing, 
smart, uh, staying relaxed, staying in his rhythm. And because of that, and he was being defensively responsible. And because of that, and he said he's been working on defense as well. I'm going to get to my because of that in a second. But he said he's been working on defense with Body McGirt for this fight. And because of that, I think Alvarez couldn't land his jab. And when you take Alvarez's jab away, he's not a, a particularly spectacular fighter. You know, Alvarez, even when he beat Kovalev first time around, I remember saying that he's never jumped out at you as an outstanding talent, Alvarez. He's always been a kind of a sleeper in the light heavyweight division because other than his jab, he doesn't really do anything spectacularly well. He's a solid fighter. He's a strong, big light heavyweight, but he's not a devastating puncher. He's He's got speed there, but not crazy speed. He's just a, a solid fighter, but nothing outstanding. And Kovalev really exposed that here. He exposed the fact that Alvarez is nothing outstanding. Um, so I, I don't want to take anything away from Kovalev. I don't think it was a case of Alvarez not showing up or being really poor. I just think it's a case of Kovalev making the necessary adjustments, getting in much better condition, being in a better place mentally, uh, being with a trainer who got him to box rather than look for the knockout all the time. So yeah, I think it was all down to Kovalev. He made the adjustments and Alvarez didn't. Alvarez was banking on knocking Kovalev out again. Did, did Alvarez look like a guy who thought he was going to win on points or thought, or even thought that he could win on points? He wasn't even thinking about points. From the opening bell, this is a guy who looked like all I need to do is hit Kovalev on the chin and he's going to fall apart again. And that was a big mistake, banking on that. Um, they should have known. Looking at somebody like a Buddy McGirt in Kovalev's corner, they should have known that that's what Kovalev was going to try to do, his box. If I, if me, uh, uh, you know, just a YouTuber who isn't a professional boxing trainer, if I can look at Buddy McGirt in Kovalev's corner and say, okay, Kovalev's probably going to box because that's what McGirt, McGirt fighters tend to do. He gets them to focus on boxing. If I could figure that out, I don't know how the professional corner that Alvarez had couldn't figure it out. Or maybe they could, and maybe Alvarez is just too limited to be able to deal with Kovalev's adjustments. Uh, but yeah, that, that's my take on it anyway. I, I think it was Kovalev just boxed a much better fight second time around, and Alvarez just tried to do the same thing he did first time, and he didn't adjust. Uh, to be fair, neither man seemed particularly hurt in the fight. I think both guys were briefly buzzed a couple times, but nobody came close to going down. Um, it was just really good boxing from Kovalev all the way through. Impressive. And he has breathed new life into his career. He had a very rocky period with those two defeats to Andre Ward and a defeat to Alvarez. But the way he looked there, you know, he might have a couple good years left in him. Uh, obviously, it would be very different against somebody like a Bivo or even somebody like a Baturbiev because those guys have got a lot more skills than an Alvarez from what I saw there. Yeah. Um, uh, Bivo was obviously much quicker than Alvarez. And of course, you've uh, got Alexander Vodsek as well. So yeah, I think Kovalev is competitive with any of those guys. Um, I think from, from what I've seen, I think Bivol would give him the most problems because of Bivol's speed and Bivol can punch too. Bivol hasn't shown any vulnerability yet, but of course he's never been in there with a puncher like Kovalev. But from what, I saw, from what I've seen of Kovalev over his career and what I've seen of Bivol at the moment, I think Bivol's the most dangerous fight for Kovalev but when you consider how vulnerable Baturbiev looked against Callum Johnson, and when you consider the fact that uh, Vodsek against Stevenson was a competitive fight, you know, up until the end where Vodsek started taking over, it was it was a competitive fight, and Vodsek has been vulnerable in you know one or two fights himself. So I think Kovalev can still hang with the best guys at 175 pounds. He might have a couple good years left in him. And yeah, congratulations on a great performance. He needs to stay with Body McGirt. <laughs> he, he, he better listen to McGirt. I know Kovalev has got this reputation of being a difficult guy to train. Body McGirt said he's had no issues with Kovalev in training camp. So maybe those stoppage defeats kind of humbled Kovalev and made him realize, you know what? I, I got to listen. I have to listen. My career's on the line here. 
and he needs to stick with Buddy because if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And to me, that was the best I've seen Sergey Kovalev, uh, particularly from a conditioning and mental point of view. That was the best I've seen him. Uh, didn't panic. He took body shots. Yeah, I mean, one or two times, maybe the body shots uh, hurt a little bit there, but he held it together much better than he did in the ward fights under the body attack and, you know, the first Alvarez fight too. So yeah, best I've seen from Kovalev, at least from a conditioning and mental point of view, if not from a technical point of view as well. Let me know how you guys felt about Kovalev's performance here and who you think he could beat at the top of the light heavyweight division. Do you think this guy could still have a Hall of Fame career? Maybe unify the whole division? I mean, he impressed me with his character in this fight because Kovalev has always come across as a bully. Um, maybe he's grown as a person. Maybe those defeats allowed him to, you know, grow stronger. It's like they say, what don't kill you makes you stronger. That's not always true. Sometimes what don't kill you actually make you weaker. But it's a, a fight or flight type situation. And in this instance, that adversity appears to have made Kovalev stronger. And he, he appears to have come out uh, a better fighter for it. And, and if you notice, Kovalev was being very civil in the build-up to this fight. And he was very civil in the ring. There was none of the meanness and the nastiness in Kovalev. You know, that bully attitude that Kovalev normally has, you didn't see it in this fight. And to me, that's indicative of his different attitude, his different mental approach. And it's worked very well. So yeah, I'm impressed. I applaud him. Great performance and maybe a, a good few years left in him if he keeps on performing like that. So let me know how you guys felt in the comment section below. And where do you think Alvarez goes from here? Were you disappointed in Alvarez? I know a lot of people, probably the majority of people that I saw online were picking Alvarez to repeat what he did first time around, they thought Kovalev was finished. And I can understand why they felt Kovalev was finished because he has fallen apart mentally before and his stamina has seemed suspect before. So I can fully understand why people saw a repeat. Uh, but yeah, to me, you got to give it up, man. Kovalev improved. So let me know how you feel, people. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.